Hello and welcome to the CLB Forge podcast. This show is to help equip you and your church for mission, ministry, and multiplying disciples. I'm Mike Natal. And I'm Ryan Nilsson. Welcome to episode 11. So seven years before any of us had ever heard of coronavirus, seven years before most of us had distance learning as a part of our everyday life, today's guest began working with LBS as director of distance education, and he came into that role with, ex- with significant experience behind his belt already. Uh, he has a bachelor's degree with a double major in physics and mathematics from the University of North Dakota and a master's degree and a PhD in physics from the University of Illinois. He worked at the Johns Hopkins University Applied Physics Laboratory, where he was a project manager in the submarine technology department and a group supervisor in both the submarine technology department and the research and technology development center. I'm already feeling incredibly insecure. Um, we're in trouble, Mike. Well, I don't know. It sounds like, so he got his degree at, uh, Illinois university. They're part of the big 10, right? That's some like the conference, thing, right? Yeah. 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 That's thing. a sports thing. Right. Yeah. So I went to Penn state. They're part of the big 10. So like, we're already sharing a bond right now. This is great. Beautiful. Keep going, Ryan. Right. You're doing a great job with this intro. Since 1978, he's taught in the Johns Hopkins university engineering for professionals, teaching courses in applied physics, applied math and technical management. He, he served as the associate dean for the Johns Hopkins University Whiting School of Engineering. Then after retirement as a special advisor to the dean, in 2010, he relocated to his boyhood hometown of Fergus Falls, Minnesota. And in 2013, he uh, accepted an appointment as the director of distance education at Lutheran Brethren Seminary. And in 2018, he became the director of the LB Discipleship Institute, which provides online biblical education and ministry training courses for adult learners. We're, that's what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, Alan has also uh, served as an elder in churches uh, from basically from 1976 um, to present with a very short gap in between. And he's an elder currently at Bethel Lutheran Church in Fergus Falls. Uh, And uh, he and his wife, Judy, have been married 55 years in September. They met at Hillcrest. They have four sons, four daughters-in-law, 10 grandkids, four great grandkids with a fifth on the way. So a special welcome to Dr. Alan Bierkus. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for letting me be here. That was a great bio. Very yeah. extensive. And I love hearing all about the kids too. That's great. Kids, grandkids, great grandkids. Amazing. I, I feel incredibly insecure right now because I'm an English major, which fully qualifies me to work at any fast food restaurant in the country. So just I, I mean, my undergrad was in music, Ryan. So I'm like pretty much oh, we're the right there boat. with you. Okay, right. Yeah. 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 Anyway, Dr. Bjorkus, Alan, uh, thank you so much for, for being with us today. We look forward to the conversation with you. Yeah, it's great to have you here. So our first question uh, is just going to kind of get the listeners uh, an opportunity to get to know you a little bit better. Um, so if you could tell us a little bit about your spiritual journey, we'd love to hear kind of like, who spoke into your life that brought you to um, the parts that you find yourselves in? And um, how did you come to be a part of the LBS faculty too, the Lutheran Brethren Seminary faculty? Okay, well, thank you, first of all, for uh, inviting me to be part of this. Uh, I'm always excited when we get to talk about discipleship. I grew up in a Christian home. Uh, My folks initially lived near Osakis, Minnesota. We moved to Fergus Falls when I was one year old uh, with this specific intent that uh, we kids would go to uh, Hillcrest. My father had graduated from the high school division of LBS in Grand Forks back in 1927. So uh, I went to grade school, junior high in Fergus Falls, went to Hillcrest where I met Judy. Uh, uh, then uh, eventually ended up as as uh, Ryan described, a uh, path that went to University of North Dakota, University of Illinois. Uh, I was also at the University of Pittsburgh for a couple of years in postdoc, and then to Maryland, where we lived for 37 years. Uh, I, I sort of came to faith in an in a obvious way when I was about 12 years old. Uh, back in those days, uh, there was a strong emphasis in the Church of Lutheran Brethren in evangelism and going to evangelistic services, and I finally uh, got convicted that I was a sinner, and, and when I was 12 years old, I, I made my initial profession of faith in Christ. Uh, there were some other experiences along the way 
that uh, led me to a deeper understanding of who God is. Uh, and uh, by the time I got to Maryland, working at Johns Hopkins, I had become very convinced that learning more about the gospel, more about what the Bible teaches, more about who God is and his relationship with me, uh, I began to teach in the uh, adult Sunday school classes in the church we were attending in Maryland. And so my view of discipleship is um, kind of a, a, a broad one. Uh, as Ryan mentioned, uh, I've been teaching in the Johns Hopkins Whiting School of Engineering for this is my 42nd year. And that teaching is to part-time students who are in full-time jobs, much like many of our seminary students are today. And we emphasize this notion of lifelong learning. And so in, in my opinion, uh, Christian discipleship is a lifelong thing. It, it, start, it starts with someone coming to faith, but it goes on and on and on until we are with Jesus in glory someday. And it's that ongoing thing that I think of when I think of discipleship. Um, I'm not saying anything bad about evangelism. That's very important. That's, that's the gateway in. But it's a lifelong thing. And so just as I was teaching engineers for most of my life, I was also teaching adults in church most of the time. And in fact, in the early 80s in, in Columbia, Maryland, we started what we called a Bible Institute in our church. It was a, a, a two-year program where people took four courses, one in the fall, one in the spring, one the next fall, the next spring. It covered biblical knowledge and covered systematic theology and covered how this all applies in our lives. And so I, I'm sort of a natural for getting to work at the seminary. So in, in 2013, after we'd been here about three years, <clears throat> I had a meeting with Dr. Bo, who was then the dean of, of the school. And I had learned that the seminary was moving online. And so I, I offered to help if I could. And, and finally, I had this meeting with Dr. Bo. And at the end of that meeting, I'd agreed to be the director of distance education for the seminary. And then later on, in uh, August of 2016, Dr. Vian came to me, and he's the president of the seminary. He came to me and he said, Al, um, we'd like you to manage a little project here. And that was the beginning of LBDI. And so I, I, I've kind of been doing this lifelong learning thing, both in the church and outside the church for a long time. And uh, uh, I'll stop there. And if you have other questions, I can uh, pick that story up a little bit later on. I love how um, God was preparing for a time that we find ourselves in now. So now, like, we're in the thick of coronavirus. And what's really amazing is that, Alan, you came on staff in 2013, right? I think that's the year that you said you came on. And... Um, you had seven years to bring us up to speed with that. I mean, I'm sure that there's a lot more stuff uh, that needs to be done and a lot of, of different things in order to adapt. But think about how well equipped the seminary was for this time with the coronavirus going on. So thank you for your hard work in that and making us prepared for that in a way that we probably didn't even expect, but in a way that God knew the whole time it had to be done. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. super cool. I think, you know, nationwide, the last six, seven years have been really difficult for a lot of seminaries around the country. And I think we have been, uh, thanks to your work, uh, we have been kind of insulated from some of that. So so there, there was kind of a, a crisis uh, brewing in uh, schools around the country and I think our church body wasn't even aware of it because mm. of the preparatory work you you had done uh, to to prepare a, a distance learning platform. So uh, yeah. Anyway, I, I like to just share that whenever I can because it's a, it's a remarkable story. Um, anyway, we're gra we're so glad you're here, and we and we want to talk about the LB Discipleship Institute. So can you tell us what is that, and and why why have you developed it? Back in, um, I guess it would be the around 2010 or so, the Church of Luther Brethren had developed a five-year plan called Lift Up Your Eyes. And part of that long-range plan involved the seminary moving into an online 
a first accreditation and then an online mode of delivering that seminary education. Another part of that long range plan was a thing called some sort of lay ministry because a need had been perceived that there were a lot of people sitting in the pews of churches in the Lutheran Brethren who uh, did not have a good, solid, well-rounded uh, education and training in ministry that would suit them to serve the, the body of Christ in their congregation. And so that's when in, in August of 2016, Dr. Beam asked me if I would try to put together a plan. So we put together a plan and that plan recognized the fact in 2016 that most of the people in the congregations of the CLB uh, worked, had families, they, they, they couldn't move to a place like Fergus and go to a Bible school. Whatever we delivered in terms of education and ministry training would have to be done in a way that they could fit that into their schedules. And so we came up with this notion that what we need is a, a fully online sort of a delivery system that would provide self-paced uh, courses in both knowledge and ministry training uh, that would meet those needs for people in the congregations uh, to, to, uh, to be equipped to be disciples of Jesus. And, and so a plan was to serve the church in that way, to provide that sort of a resource. And the, the objectives we set for LBDI were fourfold. They were to, first of all, provide Bible knowledge to people that they could apply in their everyday life. Second was to provide ministry skill training in things like Sunday school teaching, uh, youth work, music in the church, and that sort of thing. And thirdly, to provide uh, a way for them to develop solid Christian conviction for what they believe. And fourthly, to provide in all of that uh, a situation where their character, their godly character traits could be developed as we went along. So the purpose was to provide that sort of information and training input for people in congregations around the country, around the world. What went into uh, developing this uh, curriculum? What, who did you work with? Uh, what was the main like goal of it? And um, what are you hoping that it uh, produces as okay. it, yeah. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, we first of all had to look for a platform uh, to, to put this uh, education and training material in the hands of the, of the students. And we chose Moodle as a uh, learning management system, which was free. It's an open source system used by many uh, uh, homeschoolers, used by many colleges and universities, and in fact is growing in its usage around the country, um, partly because it's free. And so that became the platform we were going to use. And then what we did was we started uh, talking first with the seminary faculty about, okay, what kind of things do we need to provide this this, this biblical knowledge, this ministry skill training, this uh, the, something to develop Christian convictions and Christian character traits. And so we started by looking to the faculty. And as we thought about this, we first started thinking what we need is some kind of uh, basic Bible knowledge courses. So we have, we started with the New Testament survey course, first with their reading and understanding the Bible course uh, that Brad Pribbenow did. Then we went on to add a New Testament survey course. We're planning a, a, probably a three course uh, Old Testament survey thing. We're gonna have Dr. Bo do some, uh, some Christian doctrine classes for people. And we're planning to have an evangelism course. We're hoping to have some education courses that help people learn how to uh, teach Sunday school, plan lessons, do that sort of thing. So it's, it's all about kind of answering the question about what do people in congregations need to know to be able to be disciples of Christ in this lifelong learning mode and have the ministry skills to pass that on to other people as they, they live together. One key thing that we incorporated into this was this isn't a bunch of, we didn't plan for it to be a bunch of individuals learning stuff. We decided to in, implant into this thing a strong use of the idea of mentorship. And so we realized that 
actually Christian discipleship isn't something you do by yourself. It never has been. Yeah, Jesus yeah. didn't do that with his disciples. It was Jesus working with his disciples in that discipling relationship. It was a relationship related kind of a thing. And same thing with us. Most people as they grow in their Christian lives don't grow all by themselves in the closet. They interact with other Christians and they grow by learning things from those other people who are further down the path than they are. And so uh, we decided we'd incorporate that as an integral part of these classes. So we, we want really badly to have everyone who takes a class with us to have a mentor that is uh, engaged with them as they go down that learning path. Did I kind of answer all your questions? Yeah, you did. Uh, and that, that's so great that we're seeing the importance of that. And not only... Uh, seeing the importance of it, but embracing that too. And uh, where better for it to come than out of our seminary where people can learn uh, from the same professors that are training up pastors who then are going into the congregations and hopefully leading those discipleship movements. So those that that's tremendous that it's all coming from, from one area. So thank you so much for, for your hard work in that. Uh, and I just continue to pray as I heard about this, that it, that people really do begin to embrace it and that they take it seriously. And I'm looking forward to uh, sharing th the possibilities and um, the resources with, with my church personally as we move forward. I'm really looking forward to seeing what comes out of it in their own personal life too, because I think that's I think that that's great uh, in, in terms of not just making disciples within your own community, but also kind of forging ahead, like what you're doing, Ryan, with church planting, you know, all of that plays off of each other. And we see the importance of multiplying disciples or even uh, pushing forward into a certain mission and allowing, you know, the kingdom to be furthered through that. So that's tremendous. One of the things we're planning to do is uh, involve others in building courses, particularly pastors who have materials that would be uh, helpful in this kind of a, uh, educational situation, as well as, as elders or other <clears throat> Sunday school teachers that have some um, material that would be really helpful to go into mm. the courses. These courses are typically eight modules long, uh, could be finished in eight weeks, maybe 16 weeks. You could take a couple of weeks to go through the module. Each module has about maybe 10 hours of, of reading and, and working through stuff. And uh, so it's, uh, it's something that we hope is pretty doable for most people to take one of these at a time. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. You know, they say discipleship is more shown than taught or more caught than taught. So I love that you've built that right into your into your program. That's great. Through mentors and taking this as a cohort, taking it with a group. That's great. So it sounds like this is for anybody who is in ministry leadership, whether you're an elder or in another role, or that's something that might be down the road for you. You simply want to, you want to grow as a follower of Jesus. Uh, you want to increase your knowledge of God's word. You want to learn some practical ministry skills. You want to develop some discipleship practices and this is the the program for you so how do you sign up for it how how do you how do you get started and how does it work okay well the first thing you want to do we decided that uh the moodle environment while it's a wonderful environment for putting courses uh into and making them available it's it's not it's not friendly like a website is so we had a website developed by one of the current seminarians and the website, uh, the, the location is uh, one word, LB Discipleship Institute, one word. It's a long name, but it's, you can type it in once and then your system will remember it, .org. Go to that website and you'll see a, uh, what I think is a pretty classy representation of what we're up to. There's a four or five pages you go scrolling down through. And when you get in there, you'll find uh, that there are three ways to get involved in this. One is to uh, enroll in a class uh, with a mentor. Another is to enroll in a class, a cohort, with other people from your church, probably your church, uh, with a leader, and uh, take it together, okay? Where you each work through the material individually, and then you get together once a week, once every two weeks or so, whatever the leader decides, 
to go over the discussion questions at the end of each module. That's how we link the mentor in with the student. That at the end of each module, and like I said, there's six to eight modules in every class, at the end of each module, there's a list of six or eight or 10 questions that you talk with your mentor about, okay? So that's where you get that input from your mentor. And there's a third way to take a class, and that's to take a class without a mentor. Now we did that specifically because we knew that this culture of mentoring in the churches isn't universally done. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of people that participate in their congregations by going, going to uh, worship once a week, maybe adult Sunday school once a week, uh, and they, they, they don't really interact with someone else very deeply in between except some sort of social engagement perhaps. And so because of that, we thought, well, maybe we'll just let people start out with being a student without a mentor. And in the, in the website, there's a, a uh, one of the classes, in fact, I put it together, it's called Introduction to Mentoring. And it, it's, I put it in there so people could get an idea of what goes on with the mentorship kind of thing. And so we're hoping that more people will do that. But that's how you sign up, you, you fill out a form, I get informed by uh, the website that you've applied, and then I put together an email to you. I give you a user ID and a password to get into the course site, and, uh, and then I, I enroll you in the course you want to take, and send you an email, and off you go. Easy as that. Uh, uh, and I can tell you that he did it very quickly because my wife signed up, and shortly after she signed up, she got an email. It was, it was very quick, very quick, so. I learned at Johns Hopkins University, where I've taught all these years, that uh, we're supposed to be getting back with students who make an inquiry within 24 hours. And so I try really hard, Michael, to, to do that. <laughs> yeah, and it was great, and she appreciated it. I mean, it was, it was great, so thank you for that. So that's lbdiscipleshipinstitute.org lbdiscipleshipinstitute.org. Okay. Also, I know that this, when we're recording this is a little early, so I don't know if this is going to change by the time I say this, but I was on the clb.org website and uh, LBDI is right there on the initial page. And all you have to do is click on it and it takes you right to it. So I don't know if that'll help either. Um, and if it's still going to be there when this airs. I didn't know that, Michael. I, mm -hmm. I know that was the plan. I'll have to go yep. and look myself. I, yep. I it's up there. Yeah. It's, it's literally the first thing that you see when you uh, go onto the CLBA website. Okay. Yeah. So, and, you, and courses are free for sign up until September 1st. So there's a special launch deal. So you don't want to miss that. You want to get take advantage of that and check it out and it's very reasonable after that as well but uh free is still really good uh so yeah. just one follow-up to that uh before mike uh brings our next question how many hours like what would the average person how much time should they expect to spend in a course is there a kind of a rough range of hours that someone should be if they're if they're apprehensive about doing this can you, can you paint a picture of how, how much time you anticipate it would take? Okay. Uh, say a course like the, uh, the uh, sort of our first, our first course was this reading and understanding the Bible that Dr. Pippen would put together. And you, you, for each module, there are eight modules, okay? So for each module, there's about uh, 15 to 30 minutes of video to watch. And then there's probably an hours worth of reading in a textbook that goes with that class. Um, and so now you're up to uh, about an hour and a half. And then there are six to eight questions at the end of each module that we ask you to think about. And we're recommending you take those questions and you actually write down some ideas for answers to those questions. So when you then go talk to your mentor, you'll, you'll have material to, to talk to the mentor about and have some questions for the mentor, and the mentor may have some additional questions for you. So I would say we're, we're maybe maybe four hours total for a module. So if you can find four hours out of your week, you can probably do this one week per module. 
So in eight weeks, you have one of these courses finished. Okay. Nice. Um, I, I'd like to dig a little bit deeper into this idea of a mentor, because I know some people, they hear that word and they might get a little apprehensive about it. Um, do, do you guys have specific people who are mentors or would the individual pick the mentor or how exactly would that work? Okay. The, the mentors are best chosen by the, the so-called mentee, the person who wants to be mentored. And so my suggestion would be that if you are a person who is interested in exploring one of these courses, think about someone in your congregation that you have a lot of respect for as a Christian man or woman uh, that you would go to if you had some questions to ask about anything having to do with your faith or your life. And mm -hmm. that person would be a good candidate for this. If you can't think of anyone like that, go to one of your elders or your pastor and say, hey, I'm taking this course, I want to take this course, and I'm supposed to find a mentor. Have you got any ideas? And I, I bet that that pastor or elder would be happy to help you find someone who would walk alongside you with this thing. The mentors don't have to be unusually skilled. They don't have to be an expert in the, the topical material of that course. They just have to be someone who has walked a life with Christ a little bit longer than you have, perhaps. Maybe not even long, always longer, but just with more experience. And uh, that course I mentioned, Introduction to Mentoring, is intended for potential mentors to take to learn what it is to be a mentor. Mm -hmm. These courses, all, all you have to do is kind of, you want, because if you come in as a mentor, you get access to the course the same as a student does. So you can go through the material yourself and kind of watch it and be aware of it. And then when you meet with your the person who you're mentoring, you have the list of questions that they've been asked to talk with you about, and you just go to the question one, question one, here it is, uh, and ask the student, what, what, what did you think about that? What was your answer to that? And then mm -hmm. you listen to the student talk about that, and you may add a question or two to it, and the whole idea is to just help the student realize the importance in real life of these mm -hmm. ideas that they've been learning about in the course of it also it also cultivates a relationship between the mentor and the mentee too, like to to grow a little bit deeper uh, in their own relationship too. So in a way, like um, it, out of this, kind of brings more discipleship opportunity with the mentor and mentee, and then hopefully from there, um, people find value in what they're learning, and then they encourage other people. So that kind of brings me to my last question. So kind of to like wrap up with everything that we've been asking. Um, and you've been so incredibly thorough with answering that actually Ryan and I had a list of questions to answer, but looking through those questions, we've actually indirectly answered all of them. So thank you for uh, maybe unbeknownst doing that. Uh, but that's probably why you're a doctor. I mean, Ryan, you're a doctor too. So I'm the only person yeah. here who's, who's very under, uh, uh, scholarly un, under scholar including that word right there so um so here's my here's my last question and how we're going to kind of wrap up um if you had to give um kind of like i don't want to say a sales pitch but kind of like a reason why on top of anything else so like what like would be pitch. yeah i guess it would be kind of like a sales pitch so like if we didn't have this whole podcast and somebody were to come up to you and say why, why would I want to take classes with LBDI? What would be a reason that you would give a pastor to take it or even like a ministry leader uh, that you'd encourage them for the reason to come check it out? Okay. The reason it's important, I think, to participate as a student in something like the Discipleship Institute is because we should want to know more about Jesus. We should want to know more about the gospel. We should want to know more about how this all works out in our lives because uh, we as believers belong to Christ and we should want to be uh, like him. And so the whole purpose here is to just learn more about what God is telling us in the scriptures, uh, how this will impact our daily lives. We as parents want to be able to answer questions our kids ask us. We should be willing and interested as uh, adult believers to ask 
teenagers, if we're in youth ministry, when they ask us questions, we, we should want to be equipped to give good answers to them. And that's really what this Discipleship Institute is all about. And for example, uh, what I call sometimes maybe our flagship course is the elder training course, which is designed to train elders to be elders. Uh, it's one of the key roles in the church. And it's one of the most undertrained kind of uh, activity positions in our churches today, not just Lutheran churches, all churches. Mm -hmm. And so to, to just learn to be believers who are equipped to present Christ to people, to live Christ-like lives before people, and to just be able to know God better uh, is part of it. And one uh, sort of a secret agenda here is I would love to see a culture, and I've talked to President Larson about this too. He was the guy that actually got the word discipleship stuck in the title because we were wondering what to call this thing. And so we came up with Discipleship Institute because it fits with the Making Disciples movement that the mm -hmm. is involved in now. But the, 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 the bottom line here is I'd like to see a culture emerge in the Church of Lutheran Brethren where every church has a strong network of mentoring and discipleship going on between the more experienced people and the less experienced believers so that we have this dynamic going on that just ought to help us with evangelism, it should help us with people growing up to be adult Christians as kids, it should help us just be able to see in the church this kind of networking that we, we all talk about the body of Christ working with each other to help, to support, and so on and so forth, that we see that. And hopefully as LBDI can be something that encourages that. Long answer nice. to the question. No, that and that's tremendous. And I wanted to tell you first, I want to say amen to what you just said. Secondly, I want to say you hooked me and I'm in and I'm excited to see uh, what comes out of this. And I'm excited to uh, share it with other people too. I mean, th this is great. It's a tremendous opportunity. And not only is it a tremendous opportunity, but it's free too. like to start out. It's free, which is amazing for the time being. So thank you for your generosity and the time that you guys took into it is just a, a blessing for sure. Thank you, Alan, for uh, being our guest today. Uh, and remember, you can find LB Discipleship Institute at lbdiscipleshipinstitute.org and all courses are free until September 1st, 2020. Thank you all for listening to our show today. We'd love to cover future topics that you're looking uh, for input on. So email us with your comments and questions at podcast at clbforge.org. Don't forget to subscribe to our show. And we'd love it if you shared the podcast with a friend or colleague. Thanks for listening. And we'll see you next time. See you later.